All right, Go Ohio Cast Podcast. Welcome to tonight's episode. We have Gus Seiko. A lot, listen, I was thinking about it. There's a lot of titles that you have. You hold a lot of titles. I don't know if you know that. Hopefully all good ones. Yeah, <laughs> so, so we've got head assistant coach for St. Edward Eagles. We've got warehouse head warehouse manager for Defense Soap and, and for uh, lack of a better term, heir apparent. Okay, uh, so so if you're dealing with Guy Seiko right now, in about the next four or five years, you'll be dealing with Gus Seiko and Charlie Agazino. Is that a correct statement? That's a correct statement. Okay, so we've got those two so far. Right, we got we got St. Edward Wrestling head assistant, and we've got Defense Soap, Defense Soap, uh, the future of Defense Soap, the future owner proprietor of Defense Soap. Yes. We're working on that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, but that's, that's, you know, he laid it out to me. Guy laid it out to me and, and, you know, you know, you're his oldest child, right? Yes, I am. I got a younger sister and then I got little Max and Emma. So yeah, there's a little gap in that one, but yeah, I got a younger sister who's one year younger, Elise. And Elise, did Elise go to the Coast Guard Academy? Academy? Yes, she, did. she graduated with a, like a chemical and a mechanical engineer degree. She's a, I mean, she's a rock star in the Coast Guard. She developed some battery thing. It's all above. Way too smart for me to understand what it is. But she developed something that's on every boat the Coast Guard has. So she ended up being a, a freak in herself. So Elise, does she live in like Baltimore or D.C.? Yeah, so she's in just outside of Annapolis right now. Okay. So she mm-hmm. is in Maryland. But like yes. Annapolis is not far from D.C. probably with an hour, an hour, hour and a half, right? Yeah, she's pretty close. Okay. So she lives right there. And then uh, your younger brother and sister, Max, how much older are you than Max and, and, and Emma? So Max will turn 11 here soon. I'll be turning turn 32 here soon. So that's what, 21 years? Okay, 20, Emma 21 year old younger brother, okay. And Emma's nine, eight turn to nine. So tw- you're 23 years older than her. Yeah. Wow. What a gap. That, that's a gap. Um. So – also, you wrestled for Coach Garland at the University of Virginia. Um, two-time NCAA qualifier for Coach Garland? Yes, I was. And then um, I was reading it. You started your high- college career at 133. Kind of. I was, uh, yeah. I was supposed you wrestled to 133. Five. Yeah. I was supposed to be 25, and then I wrestled a couple opens at 33. And uh, it's actually kind of funny. I still bust Coach Garland's balls on this one. Uh, so I was being a sissy. I was still cutting weight like a high school kid. wasn't just being dumb. And uh, some complaining. I'm like, red shirt. And I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore, coach. It's 33 stuff. It's not for me. I don't want to cut weight. If I'm red shirt, and let me, I'm going to go 41. And uh, so he passed me in the back. And he's like, all right, fine. You can go to, uh, I want to say it was like the NC State Open was that weekend. He's like, you can go to the NC State Open. You're going to go 41. You're going to go 0-2. And you're going to come back. And you're going to go, Coach Garland, I'm sorry. You're right. I'm a 33-pounder. All right, coach. I'm going to show this guy. Within 12 hours, the starting 41 pounder dislocated his elbow, went from his elbow all the way up to his shoulder. And oh. I think it was gnarly. Coach, Coach Garland comes running all over me. He's like, oh, you're the guy. You're ready. I mean, you've been training for this. You're you're the guy. You're the, you're our starting 41 pounder. It's, it's time to go. <laughs> all right, coach. Thanks. And uh, uh, like, my first match was Tyler Nauman. So oh. I got a, I got a nice introduction to college wrestling. What did Tyler Nauman was a shark on top, right? Yeah, he was a tough kid. All American for Pitt. Yeah. Nauman was the he was really tough. So did you qualify at 41 and 49? No, so actually, so Nick Nelson, he ended up coming back. He made it back, I mean, probably week of conferences. And uh Coach Garland had to make a decision. I wasn't ready yet. I was still I was still immature, I wasn't really ready for it. And Nick Nelson had some really good wins prior to blowing out his elbow. And uh Garland made the right call 100 percent Nelson ended up qualifying that year. And uh, I went and I was a warm up dummy. But so then the next year I was at 49. So the two years I qualified were both at 149. Okay. And then I was looking, you're pretty good academically at UVA. University of Virginia goes back and forth with the University of Michigan with Newsweek, who's the top public university in America, right? Mm-hmm. I'm guessing you didn't pick UVA's name out of a hat. What was that process like when you were looking at the University of Virginia and Probably all the other schools. What were the other schools? I mean, it was, I did. I wanted to go to a school that I knew that would, uh, it would pay off more than just wrestling. I mean, 
I mean, look, I've been lucky enough that I've gotten to make a career out of the sport of wrestling, look at being with Defense Soap and being a coach. So I still get to be a part of it every day where I didn't know that was really going to be an option. So I wanted to make sure that I had all my bases covered. So one unfortunate, that unfortunate day of wrestling comes to an end, I was still smart enough and had a brain and a degree that I could use and go to the real world and get a real job. So there was, uh, it was a very uh, thoughtful process and look, I, I'm training to be a national champion, which coaches, which team do I think can, can do this for me. But at the same time, the, the degree can't just be a napkin. The degree has to count for something and it has to be able that I can actually go to a job resume and put on a desk and not be embarrassed about. So uh, it was, it was a tough decision. I had a lot of good, a lot of opportunities and it, yeah, just it, coach Garland really won me over. The guy is truly a, he's a special human. So it was hard not to fall in love with that guy and what he was building there and want to be a part of it. You were a sophomore and a senior state champ and a runner up in, the, in between as a junior, correct? That is correct. And then as your freshman year, were you, were you a starter? No, I was not. I got my hiney whooped by Jamie Clark. Absolutely tore me up in the uh, wrestle off. So Clark was a state champ or was he a runner up as a freshman? Sam White beat he him. Lost in, lost in OT that year to Sammy White. And then he oh. went on to win three. But that same freshman year, he, I mean, he beat Taylor in the dual meet. I want to say he beat Logan at Ironman maybe. I know he's got he's got both of them on his hit list. So I, I want to say it was both his freshman year. So the kid was, he was a real deal. That's both of their only high school losses, I believe. I think so. Uh, hold on. Taylor's might actually be Sergeant. I think Sergeant might have got Taylor, actually. Well, I know for a fact Jamie beat him in the dual meet. Jamie yeah, so, him. so Jamie beat David. So Jamie Clark is David Taylor's only high school loss. That that has to be correct because he only lost once. Yeah, they said it was it was in their duel uh, overtime match, and Taylor kind of conceded at the overtime because it was a takedown, and Jamie kept wrestling, got the pin. Wow, that's cr- was it in your gym? No, that would have been so freshman year would have been their gym. Wow, he got pinned in Grand's gym. That's wild, dude. Mm-hmm. Were you at the duel? I was not. I was green team, so I was out. It was probably Marion Harding or something around that time of the year. Dude, you guys got a crazy setup at St. Edwards with your your tiers of team because gold's the varsity, right? That's correct. Green team is the second varsity, right? Yeah. So they're those are our guys that they're they're prepping to be in the gold team the next year. That's the, the whole point of it. Um, back in the day when we really had hundred people on the roster, uh, and this this goes all the way back to Ferg. If you were a senior, you weren't allowed to wrestle a green team, even if you were technically the number two guy. Um, if there was a freshman, sophomore, even junior that was number three, he would get that green team spot for the whole purpose of he's going to varsity level matches. He's going to varsity tournaments. He's getting varsity duels in. But the whole point of, hey, this is you're the guy next year. So let's get prepared for it. So it goes Howard Ferguson started it in the 70s, right? Yes. And then Coach Half, Brian Hoffernan, who played football at Syracuse, was your guys' first state champ in 1978, correct? 79. 79. Okay. Mm-hmm. 79, Brian Hoffernan. Um, he was a Cleveland police officer, homicide detective. Oh, he was high up too. I want to say he ended up being like number three in Cleveland police. He was a, I always get mixed up. I want to say he's either a chief or a captain, but he was, he was a big deal in the Cleveland police. So he's your first state champ under Howard Ferguson, right? Yep. And does Howard Ferguson die in 1990 or 89? <sighs> Now you're, you're checking me here. I want to say, yeah, it's going to be in the 80s. Coach Hef came back in 90 or 91. And that's, yeah, right, right around the time where Coach Ferg passed. Okay. So so late, not, right. late 80s, late 80s, as I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, could actually, right. we could actually literally Google it right now. Yeah. But late 80s is when he passes because it was Alan Freed was 89, I want to say. 89 was Alan Freed. Mm-hmm. He was one of the all-time greatest St. Edward guys, in which you got a bunch of them. But um, so it goes from him to Coach Urbis. Coach Urbis was your head coach for all four years. And then all the way up until I want to say, is it is this Coach House fourth or fifth year? This is going to be Coach Half's fifth year. So I okay. came back in 15. Coach Urbis was still the head coach. So yeah, he Coach Half took the reins over in yeah, 18. So yeah, this would be your five. Okay. So you've had, you know, you've had Howard Ferguson, Greg Erbis, John Hoffernan, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you think you could be 
the next head coach for St. Edward? Do you feel like you're prepared for that role whenever Coach Half decides he's done? I'm doing everything I can to keep that big guy. So I'm hoping he doesn't ever tell me he's done. Um, but if if that t- time comes and Coach Heff feels comfortable leaving in my hands, I, I would like to think I've I've taken my notes and I definitely I, I've I don't know if he realizes how much I watch that guy and I study everything he does because he's an absolute he's a wizard he's done a fantastic job and I, if there's anyone to teach me how to do it it's him. Um, he's a, but at the moment I don't I don't plan on that big guy leaving me anytime soon. I'm hope, I'm holding on tight. I ask him every year and he's always like, why do you keep, you always ask me. I'm like, well, I have to ask you that first off. Second off, he's like, I, I feel good. He's doing the drop program with fire, firefighting right now. And I don't know how many years, I think it'll let you do make six or seven years in the drop. Once it's um, eight, eight, eight's your final year. Eight's, eight's the max year. Okay. And what year is he in? Do you know? I want to say we're in six right now, six and a half, seven. Okay. So he's always like, he said, he always equates it to, you know, I, I'm still effective with the kids. Um, like you said, he's a wizard. What are the things that you see on a daily basis with him? And it, he's obviously still very effective at coaching at an extremely high level, right? And Absolutely. I know he never wanted to be the head coach, really. That not, He was always like a room guy, right? He was always like yeah, a, he was always a room guy. He's I mean, a great when, coach, though. Coach Herbis was obviously, Coach Herbis was the head coach. Coach Herbis did a lot of great things and phenomenal things. And, but when it came to like the wrestling stuff, it, it was a lot of Coach Half behind the behind closed doors. Coach Half was running a lot of it. So obviously Coach Herbis was our main guy who was leading us. But when it was come to like the practice schedule, the training, um, technique, stuff like that, Coach Half was the guy leading that charge. So, you know, he's in his year five. And, you know, you've you've been the head assistant since since day, since you came into it, right? Since he came in and it switched over, right? Yeah, back in, yeah. Back in 2015, I came home from college. And I was didn't know what else to do with my free time. So I went back to practice and I've been helping with coach up since. So here's the big question. Like if, okay, so let's just say in five years, you know, it sounds like it's a five year ish exit plan for guy Seiko to be no longer at defense soap every day. Right. That's basically what he told me. Um, mm-hmm. And in five years, half's like, Hey, I'm done. Could you do both? things if it comes to that could you be the head wrestling coach at st edward and the co-owner operator of defense so can you do those two things at once as one guy and are you you're not married yet are you i've been engaged for eight years seven years it's been nine years, so a nine year engagement a decade-long engagement eventually that's going to come to marriage i don't know if you know that will you I think common law i think we're married <laughs> so you're married yeah something like that okay when did you get married? No, yeah, exactly. It's it was more like just making a joke, common law marriage. But uh, oh, now we're we're working on that one. Coach okay. Garland's actually officiated. But that's eventually like that's coming. You know that, right? One hundred percent. No, it's we're we're working on it. We're planning it. So I want you to think about this. There's that. There's being the head coach potentially, and then there's being the co-operator, owner of Defense Soap. Can you do all those things? Do you think you could do all those things if it comes to it? I, I believe so. I, I mean, I got a fantastic staff at Defense Soap, so there's a lot of people that I'd be leaning on to help me out during the rest of the season, obviously. And then, I mean, we really do. We have a fantastic staff at Eds as well. I mean, obviously, I mean, Coach Chef's our main guy, and he's he's doing a lot of it. But we we got a handful, a lot of assistant coaches that really help. Quite, it's substantial. We wouldn't be able to do it without them. So we we got a support system in both places that I'd I'd be able to handle it. it wouldn't just be me. I'd have tons and tons and tons of help. So you're confident in your ability. And I and I don't think John Heffernan just goes away. I don't no. think I think John Heffernan still is around, right? I'd still be texting on Monday. Hey, coach, what do you want me to do today? <laughs> That's I mean, but the guy, like you said, he's a wizard. But think about if it all rains, it pours like that scenario I just laid out to you. That's a huge thing. That's a huge amount of stressors on you and your life, Gus. I mean, that that, that would be wild if that happened like that, yes. Yeah, but I, I don't know if I'd call it stress. I mean, I, I truly do. In, in work, we stressful, but that's work and it's family business. So anyone that's ever been a family business knows what I'm getting at. But other than that, work, work still, it's wrestling. And then wrestling practices, that's enjoyable. I, I truly, I I enjoy it. It's, that's never a stress. I mean, every now and then you get a couple of knuckleheads that you got to put some extra work in that can be a little stressful. But the vast majority of it, it's, it's, it's a, it's like, nah, that's what I'm looking for here. Uh, pharmaceutical, not pharmaceutical, but it's like, no, I'm mumbling now, but it's it, therapeutic. That's the word. There we go. I knew yeah. I did it. 
it's therapeutic. I get to go sweat. I get to be around the kids. I'm bonding, having relationships with these kids. Um, I'm around my friends, the coaching staffs. So we're all great friends. So it's it truly is a fun time for me. So, you know, it's, you get this therapy, right? Defense soaps therapy, wrestling therapy. You're about to find out that marriage might be the toughest thing coming up, man. It might be seriously. Like if the other things are therapy, you're going to have something that you're really going to have to work at. Not that you're not working at defense. soap. we know that you're working like a dog, right? And we know that you're wrestling all the time. Okay. At, at St. Edward. And you're doing all the other things to help kids. You're helping them with recruitment. You know, maybe maybe you're a D2, maybe you're a D3 guy. Maybe you're a, a big time guy, right? Like, there's a lot of mm-hmm. that too. There's just so much with it. But like balance, how do you find the balance? And, you know, like being therapeutic to you, right? Does that help the balance easier? Yeah, like I said, it, it's never, I'm never dr- dredging going into practice. It's never like, oh man, I got to do this. It's, man, what are we working on today? What are we doing, coach? And it's exciting. So it's, it is fun. And then luckily I, I picked a winner. My wife is supportive of me. She, she's happy with me. And so it's, I come home and it's all sunshine rainbows there too, as well. So it's, I, uh, I got lucky in life. I say I'm pretty content and happy with everything going around. Where is your wife from? She is from Vermilion. Oh, she is. Mm-hmm. And where do you guys live? So we're in Avon Lake, small little suburb outside of Cleveland. So I'm like just smack dab in the middle of St. Ed's and work out in Vermilion. And how much did it change from uh, defense soap moving from the screw factory in Lakewood to uh, Vermilion for you? Does that kind of gum up the works a little bit or not? A little bit. I mean, before I could, I could work to the very last second because it was, I could walk there in two minutes from the last place, but now it's a little bit of a commute. So now I have to be an adult, get out of bed on time and get to work early so I can get everything done and leave enough time to get to practice up. So that's the only thing that changes. I got to leave a little early, be a little more responsible. Your guy, guy, your dad is, uh, you know, he started this. And I love hearing people talk about it on the ground level. Like, like I heard Nick Salzer. He's like, oh, yeah, defense soap, right? He's an FBI guy now. He's like, I remember when he was giving it to us and he was having 50 bars at a time made by some lady in New England, right? Yeah, he was telling lost. me that story, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. And then, do you, you're a youth, right? You're in West Shore at this point in time when he's starting the soap thing because you guys kept getting ringworm. Did mm-hmm. you, did you have ever imagined as a, as a nine, 10 year old, 11 year old, 12 year old kid that your dad's going to grow this business. He's not just going to retire as a police officer in Cleveland. He's also going to run a successful, a highly successful business where you're going to work. Could you have ever imagined that? No, at first, probably not. When we were, when we were pouring the soap out of a five gallon bucket on our kitchen table and then like you said, we had a little six pack cooler of bars. We have 12 bars at a time that you just kind of hand out. But I'd say it probably got serious when he filled up my entire wrestling room. I had a, we had a 10 by 10 wrestling mat from Cleveland state in the basement. And we filled that 10 by 10 mat all the way to the ceiling with bars of soap. I'm like, Oh, okay. So we're, we're serious about this one old man. And luckily from there on out, it was nothing but up. What, at what point does your dad um, start dating uh ashley and then when did they get married and what what is the whole like progression of that did they they were dating when you were in high school or junior high high school so So, my parents split up my sophomore year and then senior year he was with ashley and then him and ashley get married shortly thereafter i'm guessing Mm -hmm. yep and then we have max and emma right Mm -hmm. next generation how much was that different for you being a 21 year old, having a, a, a little brother when you're 21? No, I mean, it was, it was fun. It, it was, I get to, I mean, I'm handing them down a lot of like my gear. I'm handing down like some of the old CSU gear that I had. I gave them, uh, I gave him my copy of the edge that my dad bought me when I was eight. So he got that for Christmas last year. Um, so it's just, it's been kind of fun, like handing this stuff down and getting to have another generation. We'll say goes, we got to get one on the podium. So he's got, he's got a lot on his shoulders. I tell you what, he's really tough, man. And your dad puts him in a lot of adverse situations. He'll have him wrestle older kids. I mean, mm-hmm. National Middle School duels, man. This guy is battling, right? Like, he's wrestling kids who are probably fifth and sixth graders, right? Seven. Yeah, he had a rough day. Right? Mm-hmm. It's like, why am I? And he just, and he, you know, back down. He wrestles hard. He's an OAC, you know, grade school state champion multiple times. Max Aiko's tough, dude. I like watching him. He's good. Do you feel like watching him being raised compared to how what you remember going through? Is it vastly different, or, or is Guy raising you similar? It's uh, 
It's it's different. It's, it's, yeah, I'll just say it's vastly different. <laughs> the old <laughs> man's uh, he's he's getting old. He's getting a little soft, a little tired. So a little different, but that's where he calls me in. <laughs> what grade is Max in right now? Max is in what is that? That is fifth grade. So we're talking four years away from him being potentially, you know, in St. Edward's wrestling room on the team. Obviously, we know that's the goal. Mm -hmm. uh, will that be weird coaching your your baby brother? No. Um, if anything, he's he's going to hate it because he's going to get a little extra attention. He's going to be making sure he's doing everything right. But uh, I think I, I accept the challenge. I think it would be kind of neat trying to raise him. Hopefully, hopefully the kid likes me by the time he's done with it and we'll get some hardware. I know you guys will get some hardware. So speaking of which – what year? Tell me the years of the two charts. Is one twenty ten on the back? Yeah, that would be my senior year is ten. So two thousand eight and two thousand ten. Okay, so ten is the year or the Wadsworth year, right? That's the one. Okay, so you have been involved in the two greatest Division One team races in the history of the state tournament. As a wrestler in twenty ten, you won. Your team mm -hmm. was runner up to Wadsworth and then yeah. in 2021 Perrysburg or was it no 2022 so yeah it would have been the like, 21 was the the tight one 21 was real tight when they pushed oh, us 21 was in a high school gym 22 was the first year oh, back at the shop oh, you're right I'm sorry yes yes 23 was last year yet yeah. and then 2022 correct yes 2022 you were, was, you, was okay so look it's wild you were a wrestler who won a state title mm -hmm. for St. Edward in 2010 and you guys lose on, I want to say, like, Caleb Peterson or Tavanello, right? Yeah, four and a half points. Uh, we had a couple head-to-heads that we lost. Uh, Anthony Slupa wrestled Brad Squire, Hammer. And then uh, Mark Martin wrestled Loudon Gordon. Uh, but yeah, we had six finalists, four champs, two runner-ups. But we won, I think we won, won one and 11 on the backside. So that's where, like, I mean, Coach Heft talks about it all the time. Coach Irvis talks about it all the time. He, you win it on the backside. The, the, I mean, obviously, no one likes taking third. No one likes wrestling back. It sucks. But those are the guys that won us those titles. And that year, we we struggled on the backside, and Wazard needed to pay for it. And, yeah, they got us four, by four and a half points. Tavanello sealed the deal at 210. Or I think it was 210 at the time, whatever that weight class was. It was Tavanello, two, two, yeah. 215. 215, okay, yeah. Yeah, so Tavanello wins, and then their heavyweight won, too, I want to say. Um, uh, Bazzelli. And, and, you know, I mean, uh, Mark Martin gets pinned by Loudon Gordon. That was like, I remember when that happened. I have the video of that. Dude, that is wild. That is absolutely wild. Um, so what do you think you learned and what was the big thing going through your head and from 2010 as an athlete? Now you're coaching in 2022. Perrysburg's beating you with two matches left. And you got mm -hmm. a head-to-head -head with the guy you went on the mat with Luke Geog, right? What's well, actually, no, head-to-head -head was Evan Bennett. Evan Bennett had – Bennett. Um, Bennett knocks off packets. Mm -hmm. And we had lost that match twice already that year, I believe. Yeah. I know for, for a fact we lost the districts. I want to say there was another – I think we lost to him maybe in the – Lost him twice. Well. You were on two. Yeah. So, we were we were, we were were a little nervous. But, like I said, when we – Coach Jeff, he's a – man's a wizard. The guys compete in March. He, he really gets those kids competing. He gets them ready to go, gets them – Mindset's ready. Body feels great. Technique's clean. I mean, he he makes it so that it's all lined up, and all they got to do is go perform, and they they do. He was on the coaching staff in 2010. He was the head assistant coach. Yeah. So he had, he knew he knew what we was what he was up against, and for you guys to get that uh, the the Evan Bennett match, and then I think Geog then is like he clinches it, right? Yeah. Well, I think actually I think Evan technically clinched it. Okay. Uh, that head-to-head -head match, we had to win one of those, I believe, what it came down to it. It was like we had to win one, and we, we snuck two of them out. But, yeah, and Luke ended up having a win, too. Who did Luke wrestle? Luke wrestled. He dominated. He dominated. He dominated. Yeah. Was it was it Vanadia? Can't remember. That sounds right, though. That sounds right. Off the top of my head, I can't think. No, it wasn't we Vanadia. It was another guy. It was like a, a Oak Hills guy, maybe. Oh, I can't think off the top of my head. Literally something we can Google again. Yeah. Not worried about that. Um, the, the junior class right now. Mm -hmm. Junior class is St. Edward. is an all-time, like I'm saying talent-wise, they're up there with the all-time great teams, I think. 
hundred percent. They're as good as the 98 team. They're as good as the 2001 team, the 2002 team, the 2007, the 2008 team. They're up where they're with those teams. Would you agree with that? A hundred percent. I mean, they, they have the talent and then there's a lot of them. I mean, there's, there's 12 of them and they're all pretty stinking good. So uh, absolutely. This, this class is, uh, it'll go down in history as one of the, one of our better classes we've ever had. Excellence across the board with St. Edward. You just won another division one state title in um, uh, football. And I saw that Johnny Slaper was a captain. He's a multiple time state placer for you guys. Um, and Johnny's actually been up in weight and has come down, right? Yeah. We usually, we usually work some of that football flub off of him, get down to weight, but this year he's actually, he's getting looking big. I saw him in the parking lot today. Kid's pretty solid. So he'll be a, he'll be a big, big kid at 215 to work with. So you got guys like Slaper and Slaper's not even, you know what I mean? He's not even the, the A1 best guy in the class. Like you got Miller brothers are unreal, right? Yeah. Um, what do you do with these guys and, and what do you got to do to get a national title? I know that right now you're the odds on favorite in division one, Ohio, but we're, we're, you know, we're at Iron Man Eve Eve right now, right? Mm-hmm. It's Wednesday before the Iron Man 2023. I know you guys want a national title. What are you guys going to have to do to win a national title at St. Edward before these juniors leave? That's a good question, Zab. We're still working on that. I mean, we had a, we really did have a fantastic preseason. I mean, it was one of my better ones that I've been a part of. The kids really, truly locked in. Right? Like we were, it was fun. It was kind of like a college practice where we were locked in on just like a single, like one single like position for an entire week. And normally high school kids, they start getting bored, start getting antsy. But these guys were like dialed in. And I was like, look, I promise you, this is, I can tell you, Coach Lean and I spent hundreds of hours on a penetration step that I probably hit one time in my college career. But we spent those hours in the summer, and that's what we did. We came and we drilled it. So you guys are going to do the same thing. I don't want to hear any complaining. You're going to hit this sweep single leg over and over and over again until this looks perfect. And find these kids are looking good. So it's been been a great preseason. Uh, Start of the season has been going well. Everyone's healthy. I'll start getting my football players back. We'll start trickling in. Like today I had Gregory come in. Bradley came in on Monday. Gregory came in today. I'll get Slaper next week. Um, so they'll start popping back in. We'll start throwing them back out in that lineup. Uh, so it's more just keeping keep fine-tuning these little positions, uh, making sure we're disciplining the like little things that we can control. And obviously I can't control what Sam or Blair or like Alan Pratt or any of these other guys are doing. I, I'm not even going to worry about them because I can't control it, but I can make sure my kids are they're eating the right things. They're going to bed doing their homework and then when it's come to practice where we're dialed in for those hour, two hours at a time. What's wild is Ohio has a 16 game, a 16 week season for football. Mm-hmm. Ohio is we're horribly bad at making seasons way too long. We didn't get the COVID year in, in 2020 because the season was so long. That's yeah. why we didn't get the state tournament in, in 2020, 90% of the States got theirs in. Right. So Ohio's is no, notoriously bad at making the season too long. Do you think that the football season being too long might cost you guys because you're not going to have three really, really good guys in Gregory, uh, Slaper, and Eaton, right? Th- those three are not going to be at the Ironman because they just won a state title in football last weekend, right? Yeah. They're not going to be there. It's like literally it's a, it's a week turnaround. It's under yeah. a week turnaround. They're mm-hmm. not going to be there. Does the football season hurt you guys being so long? Yeah, it hurts us for the Ironman, but that's that's pretty much the only time it's going to hurt us. Luckily, we have we have Blair Academy, Lake Island Prep, and Wyoming Seminary coming to us late January, so it's going to be one heck of a quad, and we're going to get to put our put it on the line and see where we really stand. So, yeah, I mean, we're I'm not I'm not trying to make excuses, but we're showing up a little short staffed on. No, no, on no. Friday. I literally pointed it out. It's how can you make an excuse? When I literally say to you, the state of Ohio has a 16-week football <laughs> season. That's not an excuse, so stop it. Yeah, look, I mean, we're still, we're still, we have every intention of showing up and putting kids on the podium and score some team points. So, I mean, if we we were thinking we were going to lose this, we wouldn't show up. This coach has my my favorite line. Coach F tells the kids, like, hey, if you think you're going to lose, I'm not even going to bring you. What's the, what's the point of wrestling? So, and we're showing up with the full intention of winning this thing, even with what we got. And well, like I said, that class is so doggone big that I have. I've got kids still in that lineup that are going to fill in for me that they're still going to, they're going to win some matches and hopefully come home some hardware as well. I mean, I got Jared Goldberg filling in for Bradley Eaton uh, at 57. So I have kids that are, they're more than capable uh, that, that are going to fill in and they're going to do really well for me. I mean, I don't even know who's honestly, who's going to be the guy come March. That's, 
that's a wrestle up that's going to be tight and it's a, it's, it's a problem but it, it's a good problem to have that we got well, wait, is two that, very 157 well, you're telling me that bradley eaton the defending state runner-up is going to have to wrestle off for his position oh, absolutely <laughs> hold on hold on bradley eaton, let's just talk about him real quick because i was actually going to bring him up bradley eaton is the best all-around athlete in the state of ohio the results, literally, it's not a Zab opinion thing. Yeah, it's not what I, it I've is. never seen anything like that in my own but, my own athletic career, my coaching career. I've never met a child more athletic than Bradley Eaton. Bradley Eaton was fourth in Division One in Ohio in the four by eight hundred meter relay, mm-hmm. and he runs a, about a one fifty five on eight hundred meters. So I'm guessing he can go sub sub fifty in the four hundred. So there you go. There's that. I'm guessing his forty. Probably is in the four six range, four five, four six range. Okay. So there's that. He's fast. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then one year he played soccer as a freshman. Mm-hmm. And he mm-hmm. led St. Edward. He led St. Edward in goals. Okay. Yeah. So that okay, we got football and we got soccer, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. So let's go to wrestling. As a freshman, he's fifth in the state in a man's weight class, right? One of the tougher, uh, well, like 132, 138, right? Yeah. Okay, so he's fifth. Last year, he's runner-up to Harney in a barn burner at 150. Great, mm-hmm. fabulous match, okay? So there's that, okay? He's a two-time state placer in wrestling. And then um, we did the track. So he's a four-sport athlete at St. Edward, where he's been arguably the best guy on all the teams. He led the football team to a Division One state title as a sophomore last year. He led the team in tackles. This year, he uh, – I don't know his football stats as well, but I know if I was watching the game – it was right at the end of the first half, and uh, Springfield has had a drive. It was fourth down, clock hits zero, quarterback sneak. Bradley snapped, stopped the guy on like the quarter yard line. Mate, you couldn't, you couldn't get any closer to second the second half, half to the end of the, the second quarter, going into halftime. Mm-hmm. They, they, they had like the momentum. They just scored three take or three touchdowns in a row. I want to say. I think we were winning yeah. fourteen like nothing. They got the oh, onside sudden. kick. They got yeah, the also, onside kick right. Yeah, it's twenty one fourteen. They're about it's about to be 28 14. That's a lot of momentum going to half. And yet Bradley stopped him. Like honest to God, it was that kid gets a half an inch further. It's another touchdown. And Bradley put him up, put him down. So that's pretty neat. Wow. I didn't realize he was the one that made that tackle at the end of the half. Yeah. Wow. That could have broke their back, dude. That would have been it. Like I said, that's that's a lot of momentum. And then the momentum all of a sudden switches because we just have this huge stop. Kids come back, second half, they're all excited, and the rest is history. I saw Slaper made some plays too. Yes, and then I know Gregory had a forced fumble and something like sixteen tackles. So my my wrestlers did their they did their job on defense. I love it. Uh, so Bradley Eaton, I just when you say that to me, and the guys are gonna who's he got to wrestle off? Who's gonna be Jared Goldberg? So Goldberg, so Jared Goldberg and Goldberg. Eaton are in a war right now. Yeah, that dude. What does that do for your team? Which you don't know who you're putting out week to week. They're that good. Yeah, I mean it's. it's at times it could be a problem, but it's it's a good problem. I know most teams wish they had this problem where we, it's you now we have depth. And we're getting back to the old days where, like St. Ed's, where we had five full teams and all teams were competitive. And it's that room it builds people. And so when you're competing with your teammate in the room, it's it's only going to make you better. You're, you're drilling with another state level state placer, state champ, right? And it's you're, it's forcing you to be on his level at all times. He's pushing you in your drill. He's pushing you in live. Um, he's making sure you live right. So it, it only helps. <clears throat> so here's the question, you know, you're behind Jamie Clark. He's one of the top two, three guys in the country in a weight class. That's got him, Logan Stever and David Taylor, right? Mm-hmm. You're behind that guy. What did that do for you going into your sophomore year to win a state title? How did that make you better? Did it make you mad? Were you bitter? What did that do for you? Eh, I think it's say I was a little bitter. I mean, I, I was upset. I wanted it. I wanted to be the guy. But at the same time, I had to be a good teammate, make sure my teammates were ready to go for that, that year. And, but at the same time, and me getting beat up all the time and then getting to work, that was it was what prepared me for it. I, said, I, mean, I, I still was wrestling green team, wrestling varsity matches. But in the room, I was getting taking my lumps. I was training. I was learning how to get better. And all that did is it lined me up for success in the upcoming years. It's almost like Team R being behind Adam Butler. Mm-hmm. Similar to that, right? Because then oh, yeah. Butler moves up. T Mark comes in, he's your number one guy. He wins the state title. He leads you to another team title, right? Yeah. 
people say it's a lot of people don't understand why I like my little one six pounder so much. It, there's a there's a little correlation there. Is it going to be Timmy Mazer this year at six? Yeah, Timmy Mazer. And hey, hey, here's the wild thing about it. Mazer had to sit last year and green team it. <laughs> Pine yep. team it's almost like it's just this thing, and it's on purpose though. It's on yeah. purpose. Sometimes here's what people don't get. Here's what people don't get. You go to some of these places and you're not going to be the guy for four years. Yeah. It's not always bad to be behind someone who's better than you. No, it keeps you hungry, keeps you working, keeps you focused. Like I said, there's, there's a lot of life lessons involved there. It just, it does. It makes you better. As long as you don't break and you don't quit, you'll come on the other end stronger. Yeah. That's what's, I just, I, I wish that you could impart that message on to more people. Cause I know what a lot of people do. Everybody just transfers now and they go with their, you know, I, I get it, but Mazer's Mazer's going to look good coming out of the gate. Yeah. We're training. We're getting ready for it. He's Listen. a big six pounder. I'm excited to see what he can do. He, I mean, he tore it up on the green team for us last year. He had a couple wins over state placers. I um, mean, won most of his tournaments. So and the kid definitely can wrestle. He's talented. So I'm excited to see what he does for me. I remember Timmy Mazer beat Gray Burnett like 10 to three one day at Oregon clay at an OAC district. I was like, he got the boots in on him and just kept turning them on. I was like, Oh my He's God. Mean dude, super top. mean on top physical big for the weight. Mm-hmm. Wow. I mean, dude, when he beat gray Burnett, I was like, my brain almost melted. My eye was twitching. I was like, this is on the radio. <laughs> this grace grace, obviously really, you know, super talented. Grace oh, is an absolute stammer. Yes. And I want to see the gray Burnett. Ethan team, our match more than anything. I think it can be a final at the Ironman. I think they're on opposite sides. I want that. Yeah. I want as that. As as the end and everyone makes weight. No one gets hurt. If everything stays as it is. Yeah. We'll see that in the finals. Ethan team, our gray Burnett. If you're listening, if you want to get me an early Christmas gift, make the Ironman finals, please. There you uh, go. We'll, we'll a couple more. We'll get a couple runs at this. We'll, I like uh, it. It's me. It's me. Exciting year for sure. Okay. The Browns. The Browns are gunslingers, man. The Browns are pinners. They're go for broke. They're big move guys. They're chin whip, step over you. They're, mm-hmm. They find a way to, to get your ha- shoulders on the back and get their hand raised. How good are those guys for you? No, they're, it's incredible. And Carson Brown really, man, he was already a fantastic wrestler, and he, he, jumped, he jumped another level on me this summer. He's looking just truly awesome. The kid is uh, – he always he was special. And he, he just, he knows positions. He knows how to win. And now he's getting aggressive. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. And he's made, now he's forcing those positions and he just ends up on top. So he's in, he's going to do some damage this year. And then Cade, he finally got some confidence. I mean, the kid's always been talented, but he, he lacked confidence in every now and then, but now he's got that confidence that's cutting in I mean, he's shredded kids jacked up athletic specimen and he's tough. So he's another one that's going to, he's going to cause some problems for people. You got Butler and you've got Bennett. Both guys are state finalists. Uh, Bennett's a state champ. Butler's a runner-up. What do you do? What do you see for those guys? They're both senior, <laughs> right? They're in the senior class, right? Uh, Butler's a junior. Butler's a junior. Um, so Cade, Cade Brown Bennett. and Bennett are my seniors. And then okay. Slaper. Slaper's a senior. So Bennett, Bennett's going to Illinois, right? Yes, he is. And then Cade Brown's going to Pitt. Okay. So what do you, what do you see for those seniors? You know, Slaper has doesn't have a title, been a multiple time placer. Bennett does have a title, right? Yes, he does. But you want another title? Yeah. Well, what do you got to do to get your seniors onto the top of the podium this year? So we're we've been really fine tuned in really small positions, it's like small details that have kind of bit us in the butt here. I mean, Rhino Bennett's been right there every year. I mean, he got his one, but the last couple was always there's just one tiny little spot that gets him. So. He's been very disciplined and working on those teeny little details that are really, I think, are a payoff dividends. So it's really just kind of like just finishing that single the right way, finishing our stand up the right way, um, not getting lazy in the last five seconds here or there, uh, holding position at the right time. So it's nothing like major. We're not the kid's really the kid's a stud. He's an absolute stud. There's not I'm not gonna change anything with him. It's more just getting a full six minutes of perfection. Make sure we're doing everything just right. Even like I said, those teeny tiny little details that I. And he did. He bought it, and the kid's looking good, and I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to pay off. Talk about the depth last year at 215 and heavyweight. You don't have your uh, your your heavyweight decides to go to college early um, for football at Northwestern, and then um, Del Sander gets hurt after the Ironman. 
but you have two guys that step in and make the state tournament. What what is the depth? It's it's like Ferguson esque depth, right? Yeah. What has the Definitely. depth done for you guys in that in that sense? It, it kind of makes us look invincible, which I I like. I like people not realizing like, hey, it's fine. I'm getting told me don't be wrong. I never want any of my kids getting hurt. No one wants that. We want to be healthy, but. Worst case scenario that happens, I, I have a room full of just hammers at every single week. It doesn't matter what's going to happen. I have 28 guys that are getting prepared for that state tournament. Unfortunately, 14 of them get to wrestle. But no matter what, there's someone standing right behind them ready to go, pushing that first guy. And if it if it's his turn, if his name gets called, he's ready to go. And Coach Urbis can go on for – it's my favorite. I make sure he gets to talk after practice. And he always tells his stories. And this guy can go on for years on all the different guys that – no one really knows their name. And all of a sudden, and we've had guys get called the morning of the sectionals weigh-ins because the guy either got sick or got hurt or something. We're pulling in the guy that morning. And the next thing you know, kids in the state semis or something. So it's – the room really does. We have so many guys. Some of they're all working. They're all doing the same thing. It's not like my first-string guys are doing something different. They're all except on the same page, doing the same cycle, same training, same technique. So it's, it's a machine. We're all ready to go. Okay, so I went to college with four St. Edward Eagles. I went to uh, Jeremy Orski, uh, Nick Nemeth, uh, Ryan Kinley, and Mike Tolar. And there's, that's that's a group. That's a group, right? And I love all that's those guys. I love them. Those guys are all fabulous guys. And then when I see those guys, it's just like we never even left. It's not like we've been away for, from each other for 20 years. I, just, I love the guys, right? Um, got a real special relationship with them. Love Charlie. Love talking to you. But St. Edward guys, they're a different breed, right? The Edsmen are a different breed. Why do you guys have so much loyalty to the school? And why do you guys love being Edsmen so much? Like you are one, but why, if you could speak for those guys and why do you guys have such a, a, a kindred bond and why are all the dudes, man, I've had some guys, just great guys, man. Great guys to deal with those four guys. Those guys called me right now. I'd, shut the computer off and go help those guys right now if I could. Right. They're those type of guys. Um, yeah. Why, why are ads been like that? I mean, I don't want to speak for anyone else, but for, at least for me, it's, it's, it's out of just gratitude. I mean, the school really is a special place. We've had fantastic coaches throughout the, the, all these years, all those generations, whether it was the head coach or the assistant coaches in there, we have had some just fantastic individuals that are donating their time that are there working with us. And the school gets us prepared for college, which gets us prepared for life. I mean, truly the amount of resources that are poured into these children is it's insane. And so it's, it ends up being more of just a, a gratefulness that all these people took that time to make sure that we were successful. And now it's our turn to give it back because it's 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 not fair how much stuff these kids get. And luckily, when, when you get when you're a kid, you don't know it. But then all of a sudden you're 30 years old and you're looking back at it and you see truly how much people gave. And it's 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 a special place because of that. Of all, just all the the care there and everything is done for him. Greatest Edsmonds. Give me your top three. Greatest guys to ever put on the singlet for the St. Edward Eagles. Who you got? Well, you're making it hard on me for three. If you gave me more, it'd be easy because I would just give you off my national champs. The national champs kind of a different level. You got Jim Heff, you got Alan Freed, you got Ryan Bertin, Dean Heil. I mean, those, you start naming those guys, that's, that's when you're starting to get into like the special groups and then, and you got a whole nother tier of our, our multiple Americans, like the ones going on right now, Andonians. He's pretty doggone special. My teammate at UVA, Salzer, multiple time All American, pretty doggone special. Head coach, John Heff, two time All American, or Gables, pretty special. I mean, it's that's a list of people I don't know how to how to guess. Who's Four your only Olympian? Today. Who's your only Olympian? Well, Andy Robot. Andy yeah, Robot. Yeah, the Silent H, that's my guy. Old 98er. Yeah. I know, and then we got hey, you got Gray Maynard who brought us back at UFC belts. I mean, we got we got some pretty special ones out there. I, it'd be way too doggone hard for me to pick a, a top three. I do know like, Ryan Bertino is probably my hero because as a kid, that was who I wrote my paper on to get into Ed's my entrance exam. Was that I wanted to be Ryan Bertine. but then it was hard. So you got you say Ryan Lang. Lang. Did you say Ryan Lang? I said I was I was getting to it, but yeah, my four timers between Lang, Palmer, Palmer, Dean. I mean, it's it's hard not to – it's hard to pick people. The Palmer brothers are doing really well. The Palmer mm -hmm. brothers – and that it's crazy. Your dad always brings it up. He's always like, yeah, I can't have my guy, my own guy beating me. My guy beats me. Why is my guy beating me? He's my guy. I trained him. 
<laughs> yeah, Colin was with us since he was what probably his fourth grade year when he popped over. So we only got Lance for I want to say two years. But Colin was I I was teammates with Colin from he's two years older than me, so second grade through his junior year or my junior year. Yeah, and then I want everybody to think about this. Lance Palmer won two one million dollar tournaments in um, professional fight league. Mm -hmm. People who think that you have to go to the UFC to be a success successful in MMA are delusional. Delusional. Yeah. I'm going to tell you this right now. If Ben Askren never goes to the UFC, I don't think he ever loses in Bellator or the one FC and all the promotions he's in. And we're still asking the question and Ben Askren never fights the Paul brother and takes a $500,000 dive and doesn't train. Right. Mm -hmm. I think we're still talking about uh, Ben Askren of all the, all the, one of the all time greats who never, but he never was in the UFC. Right. Like yeah. I think we'd still have that, but like, you don't have to go in the UFC. What Lance Palmer's done, he's made a living, a really good living in the PFL, right? Yeah, absolutely. So there, that is my poster child for don't go in the UFC, right? Yeah. And I talked to Ryan Lang and he's like, all I cared about is I just wanted to be in the UFC and I never realized that I could have just gone to some other promotion and actually had a livable wage. And I was like, and then I'm like, you're a freaking genius. You're, you're one of the smartest people I know. How couldn't you figure that out, right? Like, it's just crazy to me how, like, uh, you know, because it's like you know, everybody wants to go into the Major League Baseball. Everybody wants to be in the NBA. They want to be at the highest level. Mm -hmm. A lot of the other promotions are pretty good, and they pay pretty well. Yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. that's just you and I talking, I guess, though, right? Yeah. Um, funny, Paul is another one. Paul is another West Shore boy. People don't realize that, but he was in the room for – Good six years with this as well. Now he's multi multi millionaire. But the, the Paul brothers, multi multi. Is, is that who you're talking about? Yeah, they're West Shore boys. They're literally worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah. Do you know whose house they moved into? Do you know this one? No, I do not. Their dad came to a West Shore practice. Logan and Jake Paul's dad, and he brought your dad a bunch of. St. Edward charts and trophies and, and your dad's like, dude, what, what is all this? The Paul brothers lived in Howard Ferguson's old house. No way. I didn't know that. Your dad told me this. I got this from your dad. <laughs> yeah. Logan and Jake Paul were raised in Howard Ferguson's old house. I swear. <laughs> your dad, Guy Seiko told me that. And their dad brought guy a bunch of this he brought him all this like saint edward stuff that was left in the home mm -hmm. and your dad's like what do you want me to do with it <laughs> i'm a west shore guy not a saint edward i'm a i don't know your dad's a, i'm a wellington guy not a saint ed's guy yeah it's probably still nervous as office now if i had a guess that's where the stuff's at <laughs> i love it uh how do you keep the machine oiled man like we just talk about all these all-time greats right we didn't even bring up rick hap we didn't even bring up Rick Hap. We didn't even drop Nick Hap's uh, or Rick Hap's name, right? We didn't even bring up yeah. Rick Hap, did we? Or Chandler or Roger Chandler, the no, hand, he... right? There's all these guys. I mean, dude, there's so many. Was James. it Greg Alinsky? Greg Alinsky, right? The first first Penn State four time All American in any sport across the board. That's why I did not know that. Mm -hmm. He still pops in the room every now and then. Man, That's he's wild, dude. He's an absolute freak. Uh, Sam Nider. Sam Nider was a mutant too. Yeah. And then he wrestled his own teammate, Zach Thompson, in the NWCA All Star match. We got that picture in the room. <laughs> and he was a two time All American, right? For Northwestern. Yeah, for Northwestern. Yeah. Total freak. I mean, dude, you got so many good ones, man. There's just Mark Jane. You just got like guys that are, you have so many, like you're saying, the amount of multiple time All Americans is like just, just shocking, right? And then, Guys who did the football thing, you had a lot of that too. A lot mm -hmm. of football crossover, you know, Brian Half, like we were talking about, yeah. Coach Hoffernan and all the Hoffernans, right? Just what is, you know, you've been real good with families, right? Yes. Absolutely. How do you guys keep the families and how do you find these families at St. Edward where you got multiple kids coming in and multiple, you know, family members winning state titles? How do you guys do that? I mean, it's once we get one, we got the rest. Like I said, the, once you get into the, the school and you, like I said, you see how much is poured into your kid, 
you're going to give me the rest of your kids. It's, it's an easy decision. Once you, once you figure it out, what all is there, we got the rest of them just getting that first one every now. And, but uh, a lot of that, I mean, it comes from our youth program. Well, sure. It's, I got to give a lot of credit to my old man every now and then. And uh, he does a fantastic job bringing the kids in and he grooms them for us. So they're ready to go. It's pretty much, we get the same system down below up is up top. So that when they get up top, it's, it's, we're just easy transitions, nothing new. It's nothing crazy. They're just maintaining what they've been doing for the last eight years. And then uh, coach half and I we probably should do a better job at it, but we, we're, we do, we take turns going into that West shore room. So I'll be helping out with my old man and the kids. And I want to make sure that they stay, they know who I am and they know my name and I know their name. I shake their hand, talk to them, ask them how they did this past weekend at the VACs and make sure that they understand that we care about them. And like I said, once, once we get them in the room, usually it's, it's an easy one to keep them. Let's just get them to give us that chance first. It's the, so many great training partners, right? What yeah. do you think West shore does? And what does guy Seiko do? That's so different than the, the, all the other youth programs in the state of Ohio and keeping kids and filtering them in, like you said, preparing them to yeah. go to St. Edward. How, what does Guy Seiko do different? I will say one thing I, I give him a lot of credit for is he, he, and this is not a knock on him. This is a, a promise. This is a compliment, but it's every now and then he knows when it's, it's time to step, uh, take a step back and he brings in young kids. So, when I was a kid growing up, he brought in, we had guys from Cleveland State, so I don't know if you remember the Manchuelo twins, uh, Anthony Coleman. So there was, that's four or five years of coaching right there. Three really good back. guys, by the way. Awesome. And like oh. great wrestlers, but really good guys too. Fantastic people. And so yeah, my yeah. dad just handed them the reins. He's like, look, whatever you need from me, and turned into more of an administrator than like the wrestling coach. And like, hey, take care of this team for me. And then the next guy up was, I mean, Charlie and Sean Harris took over for him for a while. So my dad does do a fantastic job. I mean, he knows his wrestling, but at the same time, he knows how to he knows how to build a, a squad and a group that can help him perform at that level. Uh, last year, we were blessed. He brought in uh, Devin Schroeder. Schroeder was in our room three, four days out of the week. And he was absolutely awesome that time. That stung a little bit when Wyoming picked him up because we we lost a good one there. But uh, he said over the years, my dad has done a really nice job of he's bringing in young talent, uh, young kids just graduating out of college. At, still fresh, still want to do it. And maybe they didn't get a division one college coaching job that they wanted. So they come hang out with us for a little bit and they take over like the junior high aspect for them. I mean, he does a phenomenal job of getting it. Listen, I did a practice last year, a video to practice. Mm -hmm. and everybody just kept commenting to me and call, texting me. They have a college staff. Yeah. They, have, they have Jeff Leonard, right? Like they got the old guy, Jeff Leonard, right? They got him in there. Like you just said, they got, you know. The amount of like just even just dads now. And like, well, now he doesn't know this, but I'm going to work on him pretty hard to take over for a while too. We got Sean Nemec back in the room. Another one that we didn't, we didn't name. Three-time state champ for us. Uh, wrestled Ohio State. He's got a little five-year-old that's in the room. So we get these dads that come back. And there's, and honestly, we have, I think right now there's maybe like seven or eight guys with Division One college wrestling matches under their belt that are dad coaches that are helping out. So it's. When you have people that truly have, they've gone through it, they've done it all, they've been through the same system, whether they were wrestled for my dad or wrestled for Coach Heff or wrestled for Coach Urbis, wrestled for Ferg. I mean, these guys that have been through that whole process, then they're coming back and they're giving to their kids back to us and helping out. And just like I said, it's, it's been 40 years of the same system, just kind of all like cyclical. I saw Jesse Denholm at the practice last year. I was like, I haven't seen Jesse Denholm in 20 years. Yeah. And he was a state champ in Akron Springfield. I love that dude. Good dude. But I was like, I, I couldn't believe the guys that were in the room that, like you said, Minecraft, Kevin like Schroeder's the there. popped up for us. Another, Thanks. another outer sider, but we're going to steal him too. Yeah. We have Pycraft is bringing his boy around. Really? I love it, dude. I mean, it's, it's hard to argue against it. You know, I mean, you look at like a guy like Mark Mose, he's taking his kid everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, he's been in the room quite a bit with Mark. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's really hard. Like you said, once you get one, they all understand the, the cycle of success that is there and, and they're in it. But why so many police officers and firefighters kids? Why? Why is that like this huge connection with St. Edward wrestling? Well, it was, well, they had us back in the day because there used to be residency. So if you were a Cleveland or Cleveland uh, employee, you had to live in the city of Cleveland. And then, so your options were John Marshall or St. Edward High School. So there are a lot of them. So there's a good 
So my that generation is over now. The residency's lifted, but there's a very large generation of guys that whether like so my father being a Cleveland police officer, I went to Ed's, and then now I'm in. He said now my now Max is in. My kids will go there. Um, and the cycle started with me, but yeah, once we said one, back to them. Once we get one, we get them all. And so yeah, there's a whole group of families that they were they lived in West Park, and it was that was your option. You can go to Cleveland Public School, or you can come over to St. Ed's. The big joke is uh, West Side of West Park, right? Mm -hmm. That's where all the firefighters. Oh, they all and every the single live, house right? is of fire. Yeah. So Coach like, Heff's still over there. And like you say, yeah, Heff's over there still. But mm -hmm. like the Nemeth, the Nemeths were raised in West Park, mm -hmm. so that's why the Nemeths went to yep. St. Edward. Like you said, John Marshall, St. Edward. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you're a parent and you're in a position to be able to put your kids into the St. Edwards system, as opposed to Cleveland public. I don't know with many people that wouldn't not make that choice. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, that's just, I, that's the choice I would make if I lived in that area. You know it's what I mean? not a knock on Cleveland public is, but it's more just, I mean, like I said the, the resources that we have at this school is just getting, it's getting crazy. If you saw some of the stuff in this engineering room, they have the 3d printers, the kids are building drones uh, you have like this TI innovation entrepreneur wing where they bring CEOs in once a month, come sit down and talk to the kids and show them what a real life business day looks like. I mean, it's, it's insane. Absolutely insane. So, you know, like I, I talked to Jeremy Orsky and then Nick Nemeth would talk, they painted mm -hmm. classrooms in the summer, mom and dad were concessions. It mm -hmm. doesn't. It, and here's the thing. It's like, I wrote, ah, it's the have and the have nots. If your parents don't have the money to get you into St. Edward, and you want to go to St. Edward, they're going to find a way to get you to go to St. Edward. Yeah. I mean, my, right? I mean, Ben Soap wasn't there yet. So guy was working. I mean, he would work 48. So I mean, sometimes there was 72 hours straight between his Cleveland police, part-time gigs, working the Indians game. He had like some construction stuff going on, on the side. I mean, it, it got tight for a minute, but it, it was important to him that I, I got that opportunity. And I'm truly, truly, truly grateful. And, blessed that I got them and I mean I get to learn how to work too I watched what the man did so I, there's some life lessons there but um yeah these luckily I got parents that really buy in they trust us and they they work their tail off to I mean I know it's it's a it's a big bill but I I hope that by the end of it they they appreciate and they understand that it was worth that bill because the kids really are they're getting a lot and they're they're successful St. Edward and Defense Sober are definitely like this right like we get that yeah. the one hand washes the other. <laughs> See what I did there, right? We got a dad joke. But um, what changes when Guy Seiko leaves Defense Soap and ultimately it's it's Dan, Charlie, Leah, and Gus. And then, you know, if uh, Mazer's still there, right? And you have other people oh, that... Timar. Right? T I'm sorry. Not Mazer. Timar is what I meant to say. Mm -hmm. Mazer's, Mazer's over doing other cop stuff, right? Yeah, he's a Cleveland copper. Yes. So... Timar, right? Timar's mm -hmm. dad's there. Um, what changes when Guy Seiko leaves? Does Ashley Seiko stay on? What do you do, and how does that? What 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 is your plan for that? If you can share whatever you can divulge. Uh, as That's far a as very good question. Um, I'm not sure what that when his day. I'm sure him and his wife are going to want to enjoy retirement. So I'm guessing they would probably not be in the office nearly as much. Um, but we're also I mean, we're growing at it just an absolute exponential rate. So there's I. I couldn't even guess what this is going to look like. I wouldn't be surprised if we become a, a real company here very soon. And it's no longer everyone's wearing 12 hats. It becomes a little more corporate, which I'm a little afraid of, but at the same time, it'll be good. Uh, but yeah, we're the, the rate we're growing is it's crazy. We're, we're, we're just continuing to hire new people. We, we can't, we're just feeling work. I mean, we're, the guys have been doing overtime for the last three months, just keeping up with this, the rustling surge and holiday surge and whatnot. So we're to try and guess where we're going to be. I, I couldn't tell you that. It's going to be nuts. Could we see an expansion of the, the world headquarters that's in Vermilion? Could we see you move again or will it always stay well, there? We, um, we have a lot of property in the back of that building. So they're, honestly, it's going to be in the next year or two. We're probably going to be building on the back. We're going to need more storage. We're, we, when we built it, we built it with the plan that we had something, I forget the exact number, it was, well, we got 10 years worth of growth before we fill this place. We filled it in two years. So we, uh, we missed our forecast by just a little bit. So yeah, it's, we're, we're actually, we, we, that was in talk the last couple of months. It's all right. How the heck are we going to build this? Cause 
those 40 foot mats don't move very nice. So we're going to have to figure out a way to build a hallway to go around them, build a building behind it. So you're actually literally going to leave the wrestling room untouched at defense. So, so. yeah, That's I'm guessing that room. that is an impasse when it comes to guys Seiko. there will not be the mats rolled up and moved. They're yeah. staying there. He told me. Yeah. If anything, that's me complaining. I, that's then during the summer. I tell the kids, Hey, if you want to work out, I'm not driving over the dads. You can come hang out with me anytime at work. I'll clock out, but they, they got to come to me out in Vermillion. Dude, are you ever going to have kids? Is that a thing? I think so. I'm still a kid myself though. So I, I got to learn, learn to take care of myself before I start bringing in another little, little guy I got to take care of. Okay. How long is your average day as far as a work day? When do you go to defense soap? leave defense up, go to St. Edward, and then leave St. Edward. What does the day look like for you? So between getting in between 7, 30, 8, and then I'm leaving around 2, 2, 30, and then I'm at practice till 5, and then West Shore till about 8, and getting home around 8, 39. So out the door around 7, 7, 30, get home around 9, 9, 30. So they're 14-hour days. It gets a little long sometimes. Your wife's got to be super pumped, dude. She does. She tells me she loves wrestling season. <laughs> I love it. How many employees, if we could just like, if there's a forecast, I know you're like, I don't even know where we're going to be. What do you think the amount of full-time employees is going to be? What are you at nine right now? Eight, nine? Oh, we're up to 12. Well, you're at 12 right now. What do you see the number being in five years? I keep asking five years because that's when guys like, see you mm -hmm. later, dude. It's been a good one. You know, like, what do you see the expansion being between now and four to five years? I mean, it's, it has been exponential. I mean, I would say we've been doing a new employee a year for the last two years. I wouldn't be surprised if we start picking up two, three a year now going forward. It, it's like I said, it's getting to the point where I mean, the crew might like it. But they're, they're doing a lot of overtime trying to keep up. So we're definitely, like, I could use somebody right now, honestly. So it's going to be, I wouldn't be surprised in the next five years we're up to, 30, 40 employees. I know that inflation has been crazy, but you guys have done really well at keeping your price points and you're, you're, you're really low still um, at, at defense. So, but um, can you continue to keep your price points so low in this global economy and the constant supply chain challenges and the things that have happened? Will you keep the $6 bar of soap threshold or when does that go up or don't, don't you know? We'll, we'll keep that there until we're losing money on it. Um, We'll go under before we raise that one. He's he is definitely he's a stubborn old man, and that six dollar price point is it's got a meaning to him. I'm sure you've told him tell a story a hundred times, but that was the cost to his youth wrestling was six dollars. So he want that's his that's his Costco hot dog. That that price ain't, is not going to move. That's his Arizona tea. Exactly. That will be six dollars until the very end. Until hey man, we got to move this price up. I, as much as I want to close the building, the right? Before that price goes up. Yeah, that that's wild to think that your your dad is he's so like you know what I mean. It's like Arizona, Costco hot dog. Those are the two constants that we have, <laughs> right? What yeah. else, what else pays that price, right? Mm -hmm. Crazy to think, man. I just I love hearing about it. What else would you say people don't know about defense soap that they should know about defense soap? Right, you're going into the first dandruff bar of soap, correct? Yep. So we got a, we got a, it's a bar soap shampoo that's going to have like anti, anti dandruff, which anti dandruff is anti fungal. Uh, but if, if you're looking at your head and soldiers, it says anti dandruff means anti fungal. So we'll have an anti fungal uh, bar soap for a shower, no, no shampoo. So we got that. We got our own ringworm cream coming out here. We just got the, the update today. That'll be in, in the works here in the next month, probably. Um, so we got a couple new little things popping up, but it's more just, just like wrestling we're fine-tuning the little things um we're still meatheads we're learning how to be businessmen and make sure we're putting our stuff out there the right way marketing the right way um making sure the product is just perfect so every the product's been relatively the same but there's still some things we're fine-tuning we're making it perfect obviously something has to change about everybody always wants you guys just to give them stuff me included right like, hey give me here hey more of these i need more of this to give them, <laughs> right like me included right um, it has to change at some point because everybody just wants, Hey, can you sponsor our tournament? Hey, can you give us money? Hey, this, Hey, that, right. Do you think that that spirit goes away a little bit when Charlie, no. you, 
stand? Do you guys, or do you still give back to the sport like you guys 100%. have? 100%. I mean, we wouldn't be where we are if it wasn't for the sport. Uh, like I said, if sport wrestling doesn't exist, defense hope doesn't exist. So uh, they absolutely are inter- intertwined with each other. We will forever know our roots. Even if we go to big mega corporate and our mainstream soap and not necessarily a wrestling soap, deep down, we'll still be a wrestling soap. And we'll take care of our community just as well as our community is taking care of us. Partners, Flow Wrestling and the Big Ten Network. Um, you guys do a lot with both of them. Mm-hmm. Um, sponsored a wrestler series and you got all these different things. You did the Young Bucks with um, Flow Wrestling, which was great. I don't know if you got to watch it all. Really awesome. Mark my, 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 my guy, Luke Giog in there. I had to watch it. Okay. But so you know how good that is. Mark Bader does a fabulous job. Um, but, you know, Flow Wrestling, that partnership has been on. It's been off. They bought track, you know. So yeah. you were originally track guys. And then obviously the Big Ten Network, um, you're in all the commercials, your commercial runs during the dual meets. What are they like as partners for you? And as far as you, I know that you're not the one who's super involved. It's 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 Guy and Charlie. But yeah. now that it's coming your way, it's going to start being something where you're going to integrate more into those relationships. What are they like as partners and people to deal with? Yeah, they've been fantastic. I mean, with the flow and track whatnot, not, that's uh, Shane Sparks. Charlie talks with them every every week, and I usually get pulled in and I get some goofy argument going on about who's the better 125-pounder, and I usually get called in, and there goes an hour of my work because we're having fun just BSing about wrestling. And then Big Ten Network has been unbelievable for us, and we get more people reach out to me about, hey, I saw you in that commercial. And it's like, well, I didn't know you guys watched wrestling. So the amount of exposure we get with Big Ten Network has been it's been awesome. And then we got Zeb Miller. Hey, your, your videos just as much. I'm still every turn on that. Hey. I want you paying Zeb. I I see this guy everywhere at the fence. So like, ah, he's my buddy. <laughs> you guys take care of me, man. I listen. I love it. I love being dealing with you guys. It's been. Um, I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you guys. I tell your dad all the time. I don't know if he believes me or not, but that's legit, man. I mean, this week I'll be doing some. I'll be doing some of this next week. We had Lake Erie College. They did a duel last week uh, awesome. with first years. So I mean, it's a big part of what I do. I go out west. People, mm-hmm. you know, the product's not as widely spread out or well known out there. So every time I go out there, they're like, "What is this?" They're like, "It's always like a, almost like a new reintroduction when I go out west." But um, the big one for me is you've got this core of employees, right? Yeah. Leah, she's your shipping. Mm-hmm. Dan, he's the he, Dan is Dan's everything. Whatever you want Dan to be is what Dan is, right? Mm-hmm. Tmar, workhorse, Ashley. Will you always be able to retain those people and keep them happy as you know, Charlie, Charlie was doing gyms and, you know, trying to market for fitness companies, right? Mm -hmm. You got him, you stole him. Are you going to be able to keep these people and keep this, this dude, it's a family when I go there. It's amazing. I love going there. It's a great culture and environment at defense. So are you going to be able to keep all these people? And that's the ultimate goal. And they said, we're with our growth, we're, we have position now. We're able to move people up and we're able to take care of people. And we want to make sure that they feel appreciated because we couldn't do it without them. So we definitely are, we're doing our absolute best to make sure how important they know they're important, that they get treated as they're important. And yeah, they hope we, I pray to God they don't leave me. If I lose Leah and Mr. Tmar tomorrow, I'm in you know, a world of pain. I might not be making it to practice without those guys. So that's absolutely it's crucial. We keep holding them. And then we got a couple of new guys. You got Tyler, who's, he's a lives in Vermillion. Little Xavier lives in Vermillion. Marlene lives in Vermillion. So we picked up three new ones that are, they've just molded right in, which was, it's neat. So before it was really just family in between like my family and then Charlie, he's family. Leah was family with uh, Ashley growing up. So it really was people that truly were family. Now we've kind of branched out and brought some outsiders in and they just gelled perfectly. And it, it's all fit together. Everyone loves each other. There's no bickering. There's no fighting. Everyone on the same page. It's, it makes work a lot more fun when everybody likes each other. And so it's truly our we're family and we take care of each other. Max and Emma. <laughs> you gonna you gonna bring them in? <laughs> and I'm sure there's something written in the contract that they'll be there. That would be, you know, that's yeah, some, make sure the kid gets in the school first. Can't be a dummy. Uh Charlie. Charlie's been instrumental for you guys. You know, you've you've been, done all these different uh product launches, you, you, you know, your packaging, you change a lot of things. He's always looking at other brands to compare you guys and mm-hmm. you rebranded and rebranding's not easy. And you expanded different soaps and different styles and different fragrances. And you've stuck with the same, you know, as tea tree oil, right? Eucalyptus. 
been the mm -hmm. that's been the the mainstay. But you went from bar to body wash. Now you're going to have all these different things. What has Charlie done, and what has Charlie brought to Defense Soap? Charlie's just he's really helped us structure it and be a lot more like a real business. Uh, I mean, Charlie's a he's a business grad from Cornell University. And he's not too shabby of a degree himself. He had his own landscaping business, so. I mean, I know it's, it's landscape, but at the same time, he was the guy that was the administrator behind it. He was mowing lawns, but at the same time, he had, he had a crew, he had multiple trucks. So he had that aspect, and he was the CFO for those gyms. So the amount of experience and just knowledge that Charlie had for the backside of a business, what it's really supposed to look like, not just a bunch of grunts throwing stuff around, um, he's really helped us structure things the, the right way. What's the one thing you want people to know about Defense Soap that, it, that they do not know already, whether it's videos that I take things that they put on big 10 network flow wrestling. What don't people know about flow rest or about a uh, defense? Soap? man, well, I guess he said what they don't know is they don't have to just wait till wrestling season. It's, it's, it's a good bar of soap or a good shower gel that and I've, I might be a little biased, but I use that, that stuff year round. You don't have to just use it after wrestling practice. It's year round. soap. how long do you do this? How much longer do you do defense soap? And, and then, whenever the, the balance has to be in question with coaching, running a business, whether it's father in the future, husband, all these different things, you're, you're going to have to balance. How long do you see yourself doing this and, and work in these 12 and 14 hour days, Gus? Man, I'm still, I still got a little piss and vinegar left in me. So I definitely got, I got at least another 10. That's, that's easy. I'll give you a 10 without, without hesitation. When we start getting a little older, then I start getting new knees and new hips. Maybe I'll, I'll slow down a little bit, but at the moment, full steam ahead. How healthy are you right now? You were on crutches last year at the state tournament. You had a knee surgery, a scope done. How are you? Because what 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 ended your career at UVA? Was it neck or back? Neck. I got uh, three. I got three herniated discs in my neck. That was the the final straw. So, or did you have that fixed? No, no, I don't. That scares me. Do you have tingly? Do you have like numb arms and numb legs? Uh, left arms a little a little tingly. So you, do you still wrestle every day? Not, not every day. I'd say probably it's, it's getting closer every day now. Again, I'll see back up, but I usually try to keep around two, three days of hard and then I'll take a, take a break. I have gotten a little old in that aspect. I need my, my recovery day. Okay. And then, uh, so just, I want to give, you know, just a little context. You used to wrestle my nephew Ian all the time. Since we were in diapers. So you wrestled him one year in that, I remember the tournament of champions finals. Yeah. We were what? Eight, nine. Uh, you beat him in the tournament. He's never beaten you. Let's just get that. I want to get that. Did you ever wrestle him in high school? No, he ain't got bigger than me in high school. Okay. So I, I was a lot smaller than he is. So he was, I want to say he was like a 30, 35 pounder in high school. Right. Yeah. And like a 19 as a freshman, you were a six. Yeah, I was six, six, 12, 25. Yeah. So yeah, he was, he was always bigger than you. So you never wrestled in high school. Every time you wrestled in youth, you, you've never lost to him. I don't think so. Never I mean, lost to youth. I'll, I'll trade those youth wins though for his uh his college, his college awards. <laughs> That's just how it goes though, right? I know. Uh and funny. then and then the best was the year you wrestled him at the NCAA tournament was kind of a mess, actually. Like I didn't like it because here's what happened. He beat, he pinned the Illinois guy first round. He like lifted him and pinned the guy. Mm -hmm. And then he lost to the dude from Hofstra, maybe uh, at Cardino. Hoff, no, it would have been. Uh... A Cardino, a Cardino. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Justin yeah. Acardino. Yes. Okay. He loses to that guy. The guy like pins him. He keeps trying to like throw the guy and the guy just is like, no, nope. pins him. So he comes out. I think he inside trips you to your back and folds oh. you like a lawn chair. Space. Didn't, even tie, didn't, didn't tie up with me. Just inside trips me from five feet away straight to my yeah, back. Yeah, it was it was a running inside trip, right? Mm -hmm. So it gets you fighting off your back. And well, actually, then, no, he barrel rolled me first. Did he barrel roll you and then he inside tripped you? So he's yeah. beating you. Eight, yeah. eight, eight one, eight nothing, eight one. He's, he's beat me up pretty bad. So it's eight one. You're wrestling him. And then uh, I saw it happen. He starfished out on the mat for the second and third period. And he wouldn't get off the mat. And I think the they gave him two stall points because he literally would not come off the mat. He would not even, like, bring his chest up. 
Okay. I think he was done cutting weight. I don't know what his deal was, but I caught just him like, really off the scale. He was big. He went he was, up to 57 after that. He yes. was a big 49 pounder. And I just, I happened to catch him right off that scale. <laughs> but I think he beat him 10, nine. It was close. He was gonna it was, yeah. 10, nine. And he just kept calling him for stalling and you got the ride 10 point. Mm-hmm. And I watched it happen. I was like, what is happening? Cause I was right there. I was in the media row. I was right yeah. on the mat. Mm-hmm. What's wild about him is here's what's crazy. He's wrestled all the Jordans. He's yeah. never lost to a Jordan. <laughs> Did you used to wrestle them too? I wrestled Zeke a lot. Yeah. So him and Zeke always used to be, he's never lost to Zeke. He's never lost to Bo. And he's beating them. And dude, and he, and he wrestled them all in college too. And he beat mm-hmm. them there too. He yeah. Was he ain't had yeah. Was but, so for context to how good Gus Seiko was, he never lost to Ian Miller. And you know, beat me the next match. Can't be sorry. That <laughs> was the same mess. SOB since we're in diapers. And then re- two back to back WrestleBack matches is Ian Miller, Can't be sorry. Like, can, can I get someone different? Can we, can we rotate this out a little bit, maybe? I did not let that like bum me out. I was like, why are these guys in this? What, how does this happen? It's <laughs> exactly. crazy because you look, there's Big Ten guys who wrestle Big Ten guys first round. Yeah. They wrestle three yeah. Big Ten guys in the con- – it's just how it goes. Yeah, I mean, it's not like the NCAA seeding knew that Ian, Cam, and I were wrestling when we were eight. That just – weird. That's correct. That was a crazy group, though. I mean, that, I mean, obviously, I'm not putting my name in that hat, but, like, that generation was – there were some freaks that came out between the Taylors, the Stevers, Clark, Tassari, Phillips. I mean, it was – there were some just hammers that came out in that 2010 class. Well, what's crazy to me is the guy, and you know who the guy was, the standard in that grade in the state of Ohio for the 2010, well, 2009, what, what was was Logan Steber. Yeah. He was the guy. And what's crazy That's is, true. and then if you're, you know, the people are listening to this, well, David Taylor was in that group too. David yeah. Taylor's a little older. He's 08. Mm-hmm. But Logan was the guy. Logan yeah. was the guy. All of you guys, whether it was Jamie Clark, whether it was you, whether it was Jerome, Ian, Cam, Hunter Stever, name a guy, name a guy who was elite, right? And then went on being multiple time on Salzer. I don't care who it was. They're all chasing and they're all competing and they all want to train. I don't know if they wanted to train <laughs> with Logan Stever, but they trained with Logan Stever, right? He yes. made that whole, like you said, that whole group. You want to talk about why those guys were elite at the next level? It was because of Logan Stever. They were all chasing them. I mean, I might have one takedown ever, and I paid horribly, miserably for it after that. And it just, yeah. I have seen that guy commit no less than a thousand felonies against his brother and Jamie Clark. <laughs> he would grab these guys, and I was like, oh, my God. Did he grab them and throw them? That it was like savage playground bully stuff. I was like, oh, he was sadistic. He was, and he was so strong. Mm-hmm. You could see it. Like one day I asked him, I could do that. I got to feel like, like a head pinch, like how he would bear uh, uh gator roll people, head pinch gator yeah. roll. And I was, you understand I'm 240 pounds and he's a high school kid. He picked me up and rolled me through. Like it was nothing. I, I was like, Oh my God, strong. just a freak dude. But then think he about it. Works. Like, I mean, people talk about how much of a freak he is. I'll never forget. It stuck out in my mind. I don't know if I ever even told Logan this, but we were at the same uh, Jeff Jordan state champ camp back in the day, back when I was still in the schoolhouse. And uh, so coach Jordan wakes us up at six in the morning to go run. And I'm still, I'm still with sixth, seventh grade. So I'm young and I'm not disciplined enough to think about this. I'm just complaining that I got to go run at six in the morning. And I look over and Logan's got a stopwatch on his wrist. And dad's not there. It was it was just us kids and Coach Jordan sends us out and Logan's sitting there with stopwatch. He's timing himself. And I if I don't remember his exact time. I want to say he didn't break six that time, is what it was. And he got so upset at himself. He's like throwing his watch and he was angry because he didn't break six minutes on his mile run at six o'clock in the morning. I'm like, look at this. What is wrong with that kid? Like, like maybe I don't want it that bad because if that's what that's what it takes, holy smokes, I just want my fruit loops. <laughs> That guy just, I mean, he just like, I remember Scotty Burnett would talk about him. He's like, dude, look at how dark his eyes are. He's like, he's got eyes like a shark. He goes, watch a shark, grab a hold of something and bite it. 
He goes, that's all I think about when I see Logan just grabbing everybody and mauling them. And I was like, oh, my God. And I watched him one day just absolutely dismantle his brother, Jamie Clark, and Ian. And I was like, oh, my. <laughs> I feel so bad for these guys. Dude, he would maul them. Maul yeah. them. And I think early on, I think he could get David, right? But David could just wrestle. You know, yeah. like if you look at David now. The reason that the Iranian Yazdani can't beat him is because David just rustles through everything. Yeah. He's, he's got this crazy he's, man strength that he got, you know, and, you know, he's jumped levels. He's, he takes care of his body. He's so elite, right? But David Taylor rustles now. He just rustles through everything. He just, like, he puts that guy, that uh, Yazdani, in so many adverse situations that the guy doesn't want to be in. He yeah. makes the guy wrestle hip to hip. He makes the guy wrestle scramble 50 fifties. That guy's not used to any of that. That guy's no. used to, I'm going to maul you. I'm going to club you. I'm going to underhook you. And I'm going to shove you off the mat. And you'll eventually start engaging me. And I'll just spin around and score on you. That guy actually has offense too. That guy's not just a clubber underhook pusher. That guy is extremely gifted. Oh, very much. David so. Taylor makes him look bad. Yeah. And that and that's that's what you grew up with. You grew up with David Taylor and Logan Steber, and that's who you guys were all chasing. And that's why you guys were really good, you know. And 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 we get it, man. Everybody, you know, they go to the next level, and it's hard. Sometimes people they blow their knees out. Sometimes things don't work. Sometimes their neck and their back, and you know. But you want to be able to pick a kid up someday, don't you? Yeah. Right. I mean, that, that's the way you got to look at this and, and rationalize things, but. Those guys were so good, man. They're, and I mean, David Taylor is obviously still very good. Yes. It's wild, Gus. Gus, do you have anything else for me? No, I just, I guess, defend what you've built and go Eagles. Any Ironman predictions? Yeah, it's going to be a tough one. <laughs> I'm predicting we're in, for a, we're in for a battle. I just, I mean, obviously, we're showing up to compete, we're showing up to win. I, I, I want to see my kids compete hard. I want to see bonus points. I don't I don't want to see any quitting. I don't want to see any last minute giving up takedowns. I want to see six minutes of competing hard, looking to score those next points. Um, I think my little boy team, I, I really am telling you, my little boy team are, I like that kid a lot. He's he's my boy, Carson Brown, Rhino Bennett, Cade Brown. I mean, it's I, I've got some hammers in that the lower lightweights, and he's then junior miller at the three seed. Um, hopefully, I mean we didn't get we didn't get a champ last year, so we're we're working at it. Um, but it's, it's, it's going to be fun. I mean, long oh, day, but it's going to be fun. Oh, wait, it's Ty. Ty Miller. Ty Miller's at 75. And then 75. Junior's at 90. Junior's at 90. And Junior won Fargo, right? He won, would have been, not this past summer, but the summer before. He's really good. And he was runner-up last year to Rocco, right? Yes. He was runner-up. He was runner-up at the Ironman and then runner-up in the state, right? Yes. Okay. All right, man. I'm uh I'm gonna sign off here. I appreciate you. I'm gonna tell everybody that uh look out for me because I'm gonna hit you. <laughs> if you have an elite performance, you're gonna get to defend what you've built. All right. And uh Gus Seiko, stick around. Thank you for the time. And we will see you Friday afternoon in Walsh Jesuits gymnasium. All right, stick around. Appreciate all you do, Thank you.